Hello, and welcome to Wall Street Training's exhibit on circular references. Circular references are considered to be one of Excel's most important fatal errors. Why is that the case? First of all, what is a circular reference? A circular reference simply is a reference that's circular. Now, I know you may be thinking that's a very value-added explanation, but in a short second here, I'll show, demonstrate to you exactly what it is on Excel. In general, you want to avoid circular references as much as you can. And the rationale is that a circular reference is a reference that requires itself to calculate itself. And in general, there is no good logic that should require you to know what you are to calculate yourself. However, in financial modeling, there is, only, there is a very good reason why you absolutely need circular references in part of your core financial model building. And that is ex specifically when you are trying to calculate the average balance of your debt and cash to calculate interest expense and interest income. So with that in mind, let's first turn to our Excel to actually see what a circular reference is, and then we will describe a circular reference in the context of financial modeling purposes. In our Excel here on cell A1, let's put in number 1, underneath that the number 2, and then let's take the summation of all of those two numbers. We'll quickly turn them back in blues. And in cell A1, this number 1, which is a blue hard code, we will now say equals 3, cell A3, the number 3, the total, minus A2, the number 2. And when we do something like this, we will clearly see that cell A1 actually requires itself to calculate itself. And when we hit enter in Excel, Excel says we cannot calculate a formula. Cell references in the formula refer to the formula's result, creating a circular reference. And here's Excel warning you that you cannot have a logic that is circular. You can hit the escape key, and once you hit the escape key, you will notice the bottom left of your status bar in Excel now says circular A3. This is what we will call a circular reference here, in which, again, cell A1 requires itself to calculate itself. Let us now take us into the context of financial modeling purposes. In our income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow, we will first start by calculating our net income in the income statement. This net income will then flow to the cash flow statement to begin our calculation of cash flow from operations, which we will then calculate CFI and CFF, cash flow from investing as well as cash flow from financing, and here note that we will exclude all debt-related items. And once we exclude all debt-related items, this will now give us what we, I consider to be the second most important number for purposes of balancing your entire financial model. Once again, keep this in mind. This CFO includes the effects of net income, DNA or non-cash items, as well as working capital. CFI includes all of your capital expenditures, and cash flow from financing includes all your stock-related activities, purchases and issuances, dividends, as well as share, uh, share repurchases here as well. So stock issuance and share repurchase. Here, what we will now calculate is this item called cash available required before debt. This is the total amount of cash that the company has available to them that they've generated, or if they have a shortfall, any requirement that they now need to fund. This number can either be negative or it can be positive. If this cash available required before debt, which again incorporates all cash flow related activities of the entire company except for debt related items, if this is a negative number, the CFO of that company has but one option only, and that is to borrow money. They will borrow money to fund any shortfall, that is, any cash that is required. They will have to borrow to make this up. Otherwise, they will have to go bankrupt, and they will not be able to meet their obligations. However, if this amount, cash available, is a positive number, this means that they have actually generated funds. They have generated cash from all of their previous activities. If this is a positive number, the CFO now has two options. They can either decide to pay down all their debts or part of the debts, or, or and or they can decide to build cash. Recall that stock issuances, as well as dividends and share repurchases, have already been incorporated and included into our financial model. And once we have done that, we now really only have these two options, pay down debt or build your cash. Once you do that, you now arrive at your cash requirement or your cash availability before debt payments, which then flows into your debt sweeps. This now flows into your debt sweep to calculate exactly if you need to borrow or if you, need to, uh, if you can pay down your debt, which will arrive at a brand new debt balance. The, any excess of cash that has been built throughout the time period, whether quarterly or annual model, will also affect your brand new cash balance. Once you have calculated your debt sweeps and your debt payments, 
you will now calculate your brand new ending balances, which will now calculate, in turn, your interest expense and interest income. This interest expense and this interest income flows to the income statement, which will arrive at a brand new net income number. This brand new net income number flows back into the cash flow statement to calculate, again, your cash availability or requirement, which then calculates back into your debt suite, gives you a brand new debt balance and cash balance, which then calculates you a brand new interest expense and interest income. Once again, this interest income and interest expense flows back into the income statement to net income, back to the cash flow statement, and now, hopefully, you can see why you have now created a circular reference. This circular reference in financial modeling building is required in order to be a little bit more precise with your cash flows. What exactly does that mean? Once again, let's quickly reiterate this. You need a net income number to calculate your cash sweeps, your cash availability, which determines a brand new debt balance and cash balance, which then dictates a brand new interest expense and income back to net income, and again, that is why you have a circular reference. But folks, let's think about this more precisely here. Why exactly do we have the circular reference? Well, it's very simple, because every number we need is needed to calculate themselves. But under what context only? The, under the context that you do not bill cash or pay down your debts or even borrow debt at the first day of the year, nor do you do it all at the last day of the year. And if you do not modify it, in other words, if you are only doing it at the beginning or the end of the year, that's fine, but that does not happen in real life. What happens in real life is that you actually pay it down over time. So what is the best way to model in the fact that we pay it down over time throughout the entire time period? We will use the average balance of our debt and cash to calculate interest expense and interest income. Let's turn back to our exhibit to see exactly what that means. What that means is the following. If 